Greetings and salutations, this is Huge Ass! One of my first videos was my top three Flat Earth Killers, and I always intended to do a series on Flat Earth Killers. I just never got around to it, so here I am getting around to it. The one I'm going to talk about today is High Latitude Daytime Hours. Or well, it could be Nighttime Hours. Both work for this. If you're above a certain latitude, let's say 60 degrees, and in the Southern Hemisphere, you're near the December solstice, in the Northern Hemisphere, you're near the June solstice, well, then your days get quite long. But this is a killer for the Flat Earth, because the Flurfs believe at those times, the Sun is over the respective tropics. For the June one, it's over the Tropic of Cancer. For the December one, it's over the Tropic of Capricorn. So that makes no sense. The closer you get to the poles, the days get longer, even though the sun, we know where it is. It's not over the poles. You think you, the days will get longer as you move towards the sun. But if you're moving towards the poles and the days are getting longer, you're moving away from the sun because they're over the tropics. So let's look at this scientifically. Let's start with the hypothesis that the Earth is a disk and the sun orbits around us on the solstice, the December solstice, over the Tropic of Capricorn. As a result, the location on Earth that will have the longest day will be the Tropic of Capricorn. And the days will get shorter as you move north and south from the Tropic of Capricorn. That's a logical conclusion from that Flat Earth model. So let's test that. Let's look at uh, various locations around the world and see how long the days were, according to timeanddate.com, on the December solstice, December 21st. So I chose eight places around the world to test when the sunrise and sunsets were for on the solstice, starting down in Antarctica itself at Mawson Station, the Australian base there, 67 degrees south, then coming up to the southern tip of South America, Punta Arenas in Chile, uh, 53 and a half degrees south, then the bottom tip of New Zealand, Dunedin, 45 and a half degrees south, the bottom tip of Tasmania, which is the bottom state of Australia, Hobart, 43 degrees south. Getting up there now into Pretoria in South Africa, 26 degrees south. And just under the equator is Nairobi at 1 degree south. And just to check the, what's happening in the Northern Hemisphere is the same time at the Southern Hemisphere at the December solstice. New York at 40 degrees north. And right up in the Arctic Circle, where Arctic Reflection lives, Lofoten, 62 degrees north. So let's check time and date for the sunrise and sunset on December 21st for each of those locations. And start, we'll go from north to south this time. In Lofoten, you can see that the sun didn't rise or set on that day. It was down all day. I should add that uh, any times I'm going to say for the sunrise and sunsets are local times. Uh, the idea is to indicate how long the day was in those locations. So, moving on to New York. On the 21st, the sun rose at 7.16 a.m. and set at 4.32 p.m. for a day length of 9 hours and 15 minutes, well under 12 hours. Jumping down to the equator, Nairobi. You can see it, the sun rose at 6.24 a.m. and set at 6.33, sorry, 6.36 p.m. Roughly 12 hours and 12 minutes, just a little bit over 12 hours of daylight. A bit further south in Pretoria, the sun rose at 5.12 a.m. and set at 6.58 p.m. with a day length of 13 hours and 45 minutes. Over to Hobart, the sun rose at 5.28 a.m. and set at 8.49 p.m. with a day length of 15 hours, 21 minutes and 8 seconds. A lot longer than New York, that's for sure. A little bit further south now, at Dunedin in New Zealand, at the sun rose at 5.43am and set at 9.28pm. The full length of the day was 15 hours and 44 minutes. Down to the tip of South America now, at Punta Arenas. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Uh, their sun rose at 5.12am and set at 10.11pm. Gee, that's late. Uh, a total length of day, almost 17 hours. 16 hours and 58 minutes. As you can see, daylight is getting longer the further south you go at the solstice. And just to prove the point, we'll go to Antarctica itself, Mawson Station, 
And as you can see, it's up all day on the solstice. So the exact opposite to Lofoten. Now, I don't think anyone disputes time and date's accuracy. You can go to any of these places on any of these days and check those times for yourself. In fact, I sent out a call for people to help me uh, confirm that personally. But I only got one response, and he unfortunately had a cloudy day, so we couldn't get it. But you can do it yourself. You can go to any of these places and confirm... Well, maybe not Mawson, uh, because you'd have to have uh, a job there. But uh, you can... You can go to Hobart, you can go to Dunedin, you can go to Punta Arenas. And at, for the June solstice, you can go to anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere as well and confirm that the further north you go, the longer the day will be. Now, obviously, if the sun is hanging over the Tropic of Capricorn on the December solstice, that means the longest day should be on the Tropic of Capricorn. This data proves that's not the case. The further south you go, the longer the day gets. In a sense, they're getting closer to the sun. Now, we know from the globe model, that's because the Earth has tilted slightly, you know, 23 and a half degrees or so. And that means down the south in the, in the summertime, for the south, you get longer days the further south you go. And eventually, once you get over the Antarctic Circle, you get uh, all-day sunlight, sunlight, as we saw at Mawson Station. Reverse happens for the June solstice. The Northern Hemisphere is where this all happens and where the days get longer. And, the, and for the June solstice, the sun's supposed to be over the Tropic of Cancer, not at the North Pole. It's a flat Earth killer. The data doesn't lie. But I'm sure someone out there has some alternate explanations. I'd like to see them. Put them in the comments. Or even bet, better yet, do a response video. And I'll see what I can do in response as well. The Corgi's warming up. So if you like this video, please uh, give it a like. If you like what I do in general, click the subscribe button and don't forget the bell notification. And if you'd like to support me financially in a one-off donation, buy me a cup of coffee. There's a link to the KOFI website where you can buy me a cup of coffee. I appreciate any support that you want to throw my way. So there's nothing left to do but cue the corgi. Just...